I wrap a towel around myself, stepping onto the balcony to embrace the crisp, cold air of Nunavut. The mid-February landscape, adorned with pristine white snow, turns the castle into a fairy tale scene. The chill against my naked skin brings instant relief to my overheated body. Beneath the full moon, the distant halls of Nunavut werewolves echo, a comforting reminder of my oldest and dearest friends. Each hall holds memories, especially the night I met Adair, etched into my mind. December 9, 1817, marked our arrival in Canada. In search of a secluded home, Damiano and I explored the unoccupied land. A clearing within a vast forest captivated us, and we decided it would be our haven, hidden away from prying eyes. As the guards established a base camp, an enormous wolf emerged from the trees, triggering defensive stances. Wolves of this kind were our natural-born adversaries, capable of delivering a fatal bite. Be calm, lass. I mean you no harm, the wolf conveyed before taking on a human form. A stunning man stood before me, introducing himself as Adair, the alpha of the Nunavut pack. In awe of his beauty, I stammered, my name is Sinna. I am. I was, the princess of Avaria. We didn't mean to intrude. We are just looking for a place to stay. We came from Europe and we. We don't want to cause any trouble. Adair, unfazed, responded with another sweet smile. That's okay, lass. You are no trouble at all. I was just curious about the fact that a bunch of vampires was roaming through my territory and I wanted to find out what was going on. Returning to my room, I reflect on this cherished memory. The door closes behind me and a sigh escapes my lips. My body's unusual changes demand resolution. However, thoughts shift to the impending Mardi Gras in New Orleans. New Orleans, with its vibrant festivities, holds a special place in my heart. Mardi Gras allows me to blend with humans, briefly escaping the constraints of my identity. While humans' obsession with vampires perplexes me, Mardi Gras offers a carefree atmosphere for mingling. Stretching on my bed, I reach for my phone, eager to call Damiano. He has been away in Siberia for six months, and his return would be a welcomed relief. Despite growing accustomed to his prolonged absences, I find solace in my big brother's presence. Dialing his number, Damiano's voice greets me, Hello, your highness. Are you missing me? More than you can fathom, soldier. When will you return home? I still have some business to handle here. Why? Is something amiss? I don't know. I've been plagued by peculiar dreams lately, and they manifest strange physical effects. It's as if my body is ablaze, not just with heat, but an actual burning sensation from head to toe. These dreams are unsettling, devoid of monsters or nightmarish creatures. Instead, they unveil something more menacing love. A concept that has haunted me since discovering vampires have mates, binding them eternally. The idea terrifies me, being tethered to someone without escape. Despite yearning to find my mate, the dreams unravel the darker side of love. The fear of losing someone dear, echoing the heartache I've already endured. My father's death shattered me, and I swore off love, vowing never to experience such pain again. Damiano interrupts my thoughts, asking, What do you see in these dreams? I see a man, a beautiful man with pitch black hair and deep blue eyes. In the dream, I watch over him, feeling my heart beat. But last night, he woke up, saw me, and smiled. I'm afraid, Damiano. What if these dreams are trying to tell me something? What if? Seriously, seen? Are you truly that afraid of love? Do you even know what love is? The question has lingered for years. I understand familial love, but the concept of a mate introduces a soulmate-like connection, predetermined by destiny. A love resilient to death, spanning every lifetime. The thought of such a bond is both alluring and terrifying, especially after the losses I've endured. No vampire I know has found their mate, but they relentlessly search, finding purpose in the quest. I, however, have avoided it, fearing a connection that potent. Each person I loved has been torn away, starting with my mother's death, a tragedy I blame myself for. Another death that lingers within my heart is the death of my father. Daddy? I cried as I knelt beside my father, attempting to stop the bleeding, but he was gone. His death scarred me, and when Damiano disappeared and later returned, the pain resurfaced. Yet, it was my father's brutal death that shattered my resolve against love. No. I screamed, witnessing the gruesome scene, and Damiano held me as the world blurred into darkness. Awakening, I found myself covered in blood, the result of my own violent outburst. The realization that I had become a murderer, a monster, haunted me. As these painful memories resurface, a searing pain pierces my heart. 
the recollection of those traumatic events becomes overwhelming. I can't endure such agony again, especially not with someone who might rekindle life within me. The risk is too great. You know how much I suffered, Dami. I can't go through that again, I confess, my voice barely a whisper and Damiano sighs in response. It doesn't have to conclude that way, Sin. You're tormenting yourself over something uncertain, something that can never be guaranteed. You could have a long, happy life with this man, for all you know. But you're relinquishing it for something illogical. What if you're wrong? What if I meet him only to lose him? How will I live with that? This kind of love is stronger than the love I had for our father, but his death destroyed me. I can't endure any more heartache, Dammy. I won't survive it. You're the strongest woman I've ever met in my very long existence, Sinna. But sometimes you act like a real idiot. Believe whatever you want, but I can guarantee you'll bump into this man, and when you do, you won't be able to walk away from him. You can't fight destiny, it's greater than all of us. Embrace it and let things happen as they're meant to. I know he's right, and that terrifies me the most. These dreams seem like a sign of things to come, and if they've just started, it likely means they'll come to pass soon. Is he correct? Should I let it unfold, or should I avoid it at all costs? I'm torn. I yearn to experience it, but the fear of loving someone only to lose them holds me back. Why am I overthinking this? They're just dreams, and I don't even know where this man might be. I rarely go out, so if we're to meet, it would have to be here. That implies he's likely a vampire or a werewolf, making it less likely for him to be easily killed, right? You're probably right, as always. Anyway, I have other things to focus on right now, like when my brother is coming home, I deflect, trying to determine Damiano's return. I'll be home before you know it, princess, and then you can tell me all about your mystery man. This is exciting news, we haven't heard of a union like this in a very long time, and I'd like to know what it feels like. Of course, you would. It's not like you haven't dreamt of something like this happening to you. Wanna swap places? No, I'll let you have this one. Besides, something like this might be good for you. You've locked yourself up in your tower, and the world is passing you by. It's time for you to live a little and experience life outside your castle. There's more to the world than being a queen, Sinna, and you might find that you want this more than you think you do. Though I love my brother, he can be a pain, especially when he's right. I haven't left Honora in a year, except for Mardi Gras. It's not that I dislike traveling, I've been hiding from the world, leaving the kingdom only for New Orleans. Perhaps it's time for a change. There's this girl who's been emailing me persistently, wanting to get into my club. Maybe it's time to respond, find some company, and distract myself. Okay, fine. I was planning on going to Mardi Gras anyway. Will you be joining me? I inquire, hoping for a positive response. Not this time, princess, but that doesn't mean you have to lock yourself up in your mansion either. Have some fun while you're there. Just let loose for once, because your behavior is starting to get concerning. I promise I'll have some fun, and maybe I'll stay a little longer than usual just to escape the mundane. Good. I'll see you soon, princess, and you better be in better shape when I arrive. Damiano hangs up, and I decide to research the persistent emailer, Layla Smith. I dress and head to my office, feeling a slight curiosity about this human who's been trying to enter Wicked. I open my laptop and type Layla Smith into the search engine. One Twitter account draws my attention, and her appearance captivates me.